questions of integrity, physical evidence. Um, it's very important that you evaluate the evidence in terms of its value. And since the trigger guard fingerprints are an issue of value, I thought it was very important to bring that up to you today. Um, the uh, FBI received the rifle on the morning of the, November 23rd and within a few hours decided the fingerprints on the latent trigger guard had no value. Okay? But several experts over the years and during testimony during the Warren Commission said that the trigger guard latents do have value and two of them belong to Lee Harvey Oswald. Okay? So I'm going to deal with Commission Exhibit 720 and 721, which are basically the same photograph. Lieutenant Day took five photographs of the rifle, okay? Three were submitted to the FBI, but only one has been published. One has been pre pre presented to the public, okay? Uh, 720 is a blow-up of 721, of the tr specific area of the trigger guard. Okay, now the published uh, version of CE21 does not show any latent images. Okay, um, this area right in here is approximately two inches by two inches. Okay, and it is the prime area. In 721 and 720, in this area right here, you can just basically see the very faint ridge lines of one of the prints that Lieutenant Day said was Oswald's number three latent, his right index finger. This is what the original photograph Lieutenant Day took shows. And in, within this photograph, what you can clearly see is you can see six latent images in a two by two square inch area on a rifle that they say the metal surfaces will not hold latent images. The latent images would be absorbed by the metal, which is BS. Okay, the, um, this is the latent image right here that uh, Lieutenant Day said was Oswald's number three. This latent image right here, can everybody hear me, hear me okay? Okay, uh, this latent image right here is Lee's number four. This is what is presented historically, okay? That may not be the case. Um, as far as latent fingerprint examinations, you, you have to first start with the pattern. You have to establish the pattern. You have to have cores, which is the center area of the latent. You have to have deltas, where the ridge lines diverge. And in this uh, whirl pattern, you have two deltas to concern with. So this right here tells you, right, and plus you have to have a ridge count from the center. Okay, you have to be able to count the amount of rings are, are on the uh, latent. That gives you value. That shows you that the latent image that you have developed has value. You can pattern identify it. Okay, now it turns out that this type of uh, latent image pattern, 65% uh, of the American population has that pattern. And it turns out this one right here, 25% uh, of the American population has that powder, pattern on one of their fingers. This is from statistics from the FBI from the, the uh, late 60s, early 70s in textbooks. Okay, uh, one of these is reversed. Okay, I don't know how that got reversed, but that's okay. Uh, you can clearly see the difference, well, you, in a couple other slides, you'll see the difference in this area of the trigger guard and this area of the trigger guard, which I'll go into detail on as we go along. I just wanted to show you the overall quality of the two, two images that as far as the published version of CE21 and the original version of 20, 721 are basically the same as far as photographic quality. Okay, this one's a little bit lighter. There's a little bit more contrast but this is because of the printing. But the detail contrast in the key areas is basically the same. All right, now this is, like I say, this is a second generation copy of 720. Uh, you can't see as well this latent image 
but you can see these a little bit better. So I'm using this one as we go along. This is the published version of 721. These published versions were taken from the Youngstown Public Library uh, several years ago. They had the complete Warren Commission volumes on file right there. It's straight Xerox, that's all it is. But this is what you see. The quality is not as good uh, as far as the published version when you compare it to the original version. Uh, like you see right here, there is, this is a partial. This may be another partial. This may be a full latent, which I'll get into later. And this, again, is the uh, one world pattern that they consider is Oswald's number four. However, this shows you a little bit better. The, the, the main aspects of the ridge lines are highlighted here so that you can get a little bit better idea. It's kind of hard to see that. Okay. All right, now this is the area off of 721. Lieutenant Day in his te testimony says that he noticed a latent image under the telescopic sight, okay? And that caused him to look underneath, take the rifle apart. If you look in this area right here, this is the published version, you'll see this area of white right here. If you look down here off of the original, this is the latent image Lieutenant Day saw under the telescopic sight. You won't find that talked about by the FBI. You won't find it in a report. It's been wiped from the face of the earth. You, there's no reference to it other than Lieutenant Day's testimony that he noticed a latent image under the telescopic sight. Now, this is where we're getting into some, some problems. These are extreme blow-ups. This is about a 3 16th of an inch screw, okay? This area right here, this black right here, corresponds with this black right here, but where is all this detail right here? It isn't in the published version because it was retouched. It's the only reason. This print, this latent image that uh, you can see right in this area right here and in that area, okay, is gone in the published image. If they're saying that the, the, the latent image have no value, they don't want to show you a photograph with latent image that do show value. So this is why uh, there's a great deal of concern about the retouching. All right. Um, Right in this area, right here, there is an X, and it's a penciled X. It's a penciled X on the negative. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Uh, I just put this in here to show you I don't know everything, and we're like everybody else, we're, we have a lot to go. We get the basics, and we can take it from there. Now, this is the original 721, and you can see the highlighted area. I, I had. At first, I considered this a full finger latent, okay? However, since, well, about six months ago, I decided it is not a full finger latent. It's a palm print, okay? You'll notice, however, that you can't see any of the latent images on the published version of this exhibit because they were retouched. They were removed. Okay? This caused a lot of, this, this is why I'm questioning the integrity of this evidence. Okay? One image doesn't show what the other one does. This is what has been published. This is what they never expected the public to see. <clears throat> All right, now this is what I believe and I don't really want to spend a lot of time on it, but it, you'll see it towards the end of the presentation where this comes from. Like I said, I believe this is Lee Harvey Oswald's right palm print. Palm prints are never mentioned of being associated with the trigger guard. There's a reason. I, I know you're waiting for that reason. That comes towards the end. <laughs> Uh, believe me, I'm very nervous and trying to speed this up a little bit for everybody. There's a lot of problem with the records, okay? 
These are Lee's fingerprints. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you have the full five fingers, okay? However, what is missing is all the data, the sex, race, uh, all this critical information to be submitted to the court is missing. You would, uh, no police department, no prosecutor would submit this as evidence with these spaces blank. Nobody would. It's an incomplete record. Okay, now we're getting into the area. About two years ago, I got a hold of these photographs and I ran them through a computer. Okay, luckily the recorded fingerprints of Lee Harvey Oswald are available online in the Dallas City Records. Okay, so I downloaded them. Um, this is one of the ones Lieutenant Knight took and it's off of the refuse to sign card. And I really got to mention this refuse to sign card. Lee Oswald complained that he was fingerprinted three times. Two fingerprint records were submitted while Lee Harvey Oswald was alive and one fingerprint card was submitted after he was dead. Well, Lee could not have known about the third one because he was dead, but he did refuse to sign it. Okay, you know, and everybody has to know that he refused to sign it. Okay, I, that really bugs me. Oop, wrong way. Okay, now the computer software, the computer software eliminates experts' opinions. Okay, the computer does it for you. You just push a button, bam. It'll give you 40 points of identification off of any partial or any latent image that you want to look at. This is off of Lee's uh, right ring finger. And you'll see along the side, each one of the points of identification are clearly marked. The computer did all that work for me, okay? And it does more. The computer's amazing. I have a, trouble, I have a lot of trouble just finding the press any key to solve problems, but uh, the computer will do the work for you. Not only does the um, computer point out the points of identification, it will give you the directions of the ridge lines, it'll give you directions of the point of identification. That's where the contrasting um, red and green symbols with the lines through them go. Now, this is the computer evaluation of the one image that I showed you that they consider Lee Harvey Oswald's number four fingerprint. Okay? Now, this gives you 40 points of identification. You can clearly see them, although you can't really see them. You can just see a blur of um, gray, white, and black, red, and green, okay? This is the problem using photographic material for your identification. All evidence should be examined from original source. In other words, you have a physical item, you examine it. You don't examine a photograph of that item. Fingerprints, you don't examine photographs that may be three or four generations of photographs to get an identification. You look at the original latent image on the item, or you look at the original lift and uh, photographs taken from that original lift because the original lift removes all excess surface noise, either grain structure, patterns of the surface texture, um, different things, light reflections, uh, that will give you a false reading. Those are eliminated by using the original source material. Nobody, except for the FBI, had opportunity Two examines original source material, material concerning the fingerprints. Mandela, Scales, Padrell, anybody, anybody that examined the fingerprint evidence off of the trigger guard used photographic work. Nobody has seen the lift. Okay, I don't even believe the, the, the lift is still in existence. I'd like to see it. Okay, now. I ran Oswald's fingerprint through the computer and I ran the um, trigger guard latent image number four through the computer. They don't match. A lot of people say you need 12 points of identification for matching or more, okay? But you only need one to show it doesn't match, okay? So as it stands right now, as a layman, as, an as a concerned individual, just like each and every one of you out there, consider yourself a concerned individual and question the 
integrity of each item of evidence under the law. Look towards the law to help you resolve and find your answers. That's where it lies. Two years ago, I took this information that I have shown you basically right, right here, and I submitted it to the FBI. I contacted the FBI the day I got the original photographs, and the re FBI refused to see me in Washington, D.C. So I went back home. I contacted the uh, FBI by telephone. I told them the situation. I told them what I wanted to do, what I needed, what type of information I was looking for, and its purpose. They said, okay, what you have to do is you have to find a police department that will submit this evidence to us. I says, fine, I got that. Assist, uh, the assistant, police, assistant chief of police was a guy I went to high school with. Okay, so I called Denny up and I says, hey, Denny, I need you a favor. I need you to send these to the FBI. He says, no problem, bring them down here. So he takes me over to Dave Mason, who is the uh, fingerprint ex expert at the police department, and bam, I give it to him, he sends it. This was in September of 01. The FBI receives it on just about 9-11, and they were kind of busy after 9-11 for a little bit, and so I don't blame them. They never got back to me, but it has been two years, and I've never been able to get a word from the FBI off of the results of their running this, these latent images from the original lift through their computer software, which they use every day, and just about every major police department in the world uses the same type of computer software now to do this evaluation of latent fingerprints. It eliminates chances of error, it eliminates questions of integrity, and it's factual. So, uh, my purpose in submitting this abstract and standing here before you today was to get individuals like Dr. Lee, and I am very honored that he even talked to me and looked at, he's a great guy, I love the guy. Uh, he looked at this stuff and he's interested and I've accomplished my goal. Now if I can get you guys interested in it too and you can guys can get together and we can put some pressure, you take all this type of stuff, everything John Hunt said today, everything Stu Wexler said today, and everything you guys have talked to each other about all through this whole conference, let's get together and let's move on. Okay, and I'm trying to keep going here. Um, uh, the computer also does things, uh, it tells you value of the recorded image. In other words, if the, the image that you recorded has no, very little value or all, all these white spaces that you see in that lane are areas of no value, so you can't get an identification out of it. A lot of the Dallas police records of Lee Harvey Oswald have very little value. There is more white space than ridge line. Now I'm going to pass up on this, and I'm going to pass up on Wilkins to keep moving on up here. All right, um, classification. The photographs, all right, first of all, let me back up. The rifle was found approximately 136 by Lieutenant Day. He dusted the rifle, found prints. Immediately, between 1.36 and 2 o'clock, he found latent images on the trigger guard. No idea who owns that rifle. Nobody has any idea who owns that rifle. That comes later, much later. Lieutenant Day takes that rifle back to, head, to, the, to the office and locks it up. There is a key to the assassination that just happened those latent fingerprints on that trigger guard that are known to be, have been developed. Procedure should have demanded that they be processed right now for identification, which means they had to be lifted and submitted to the FBI ASAP. The FBI in the 1950s had a process called the speed light transmitter. Police departments could take a latent image, photograph it, put it on the wire service, send it to the FBI, within two hours on a per, uh, they could give you identification of that fingerprint if it is on file. Two hours. The FBI doesn't get this trigger, uh, trigger guard fingerprint until 17 and a half hours later. That's a crime itself. You know, that's 17, 17 and a half hours of escape time. Okay. Um, oh. Let me get back on to this classification mark. Um, 
the top line is um, Lee Harvey Oswald's Marine Corps records from 1956. And I do have to mention this. Um, Lee Harvey Oswald was fingerprinted on the 17th of October. He was not even approved for enlistment until the 26th. But yet he was fingerprinted and given a serial number on the 17th. That is a violation of Title 10 U.S. Code. Okay? And I, can, I have the, uh, uh, the UMCJ will show you it prevents fraudulent, fraudulent enlistments. Lee Harvey Oswald's enlistment into the Marine Corps is, was a fraudulent enlistment. Okay? But I wanted you to notice that the 15, the I, the 25, the W, the I, and the two zeros in the 1956 record look exactly like the New Orleans records in 1963 as far as the numbers, the writing, the, um, especially this area right here and right here. It's very odd over a space of six years for a guy to write the same letters, the same numbers exactly alike. Now this is just something that uh, is an add-on tacked on. Uh, moving on, the one thing that really upset me on the partial latent images developed on all the items of evidence, nobody did any poroscopy. Pores on the fingerprints, pores in the latent image are just as identifiable as your overall fingerprint. They are unique. Each pore is unique to the individual. Okay, no pore samples were uh, no pore sam poroscopy was done on any of the items of evidence. In the same line, the FBI has a procedure called master case prints. Master case prints were requested of, of, of Ruby, of Jack Ruby, but they were not requested of Lee Harvey Oswald. There are no master case prints of Lee Harvey Oswald. Master case prints uh, will record the side of the palm, the heel of the palm, the left and right side of the full finger. A lot more detail than just your ten fingers and then your fives on the bottom. Okay, now we're getting back to what I told you about was the concern on the... Uh, the right palm of uh, Lee Harvey Oswald being on the trigger guard. Lieutenant Day submitted S Commission Exhibit 637 to the, F uh, to the uh, Warren Commission. All right, now this is a lift off underside gun barrel near end of foregrip. There is no mention of palm print. No mention of palm print whatsoever on this chartered exhibit. Another point to remember on this chartered exhibit, the, the lift is, <clears throat> when they apply, when they, when they develop a latent image, they pour the powder on and they dust, when they see a little image developed, then they dust the surf, surplus dust, whatever color they're using, away, leaving only the outline of the latent image. This whole section is the powder. There is, no, there is nothing in that area that shows any latent image. This is Lee Harvey Oswald's right loop pattern, which is the, the, the area of his right palm that they said was under the barrel. Okay? And it's very important to notice the ridge lines of the loop. They start in the bottom right here and they go around in a circle. Okay? They follow each and every one around and around. You'll notice in this area right here, that they stay, all of them stay in the same direction. They're going in the same direction. Very important point to remember. Okay, now this is the chartered exhibit CE640, which is the latent palm print off the lift of the underside of the gun barrel near the foregrip. You notice the area 12? Notice the direction of the ridge lines? Okay. They do not follow Lee Harvey Oswald's right loop pattern ridge lines. Okay, this is the specific area. They, this is a comparison of the two exhibits. C40 is, uh, they have the recorded palm print on one side, and then they have the lifted image from the item of evidence on the next side. Notice the area 12, the ridge lines go here, the ridge lines go here. No match. 
That is not a match. 40 years we've been accepting the under the barrel palm print as Lee Harvey Oswald. Well, he owned the rifle. He's going to have a print under there somewhere. Okay. We all accepted it as evidence of possession at some time. But if there's no fingerprint, or no palm print under there, there is no proof that Lee Harvey Oswald handled that rifle at any time, assembled or disassembled. Especially when you throw into consideration the FBI says that the trigger guard fingerprints have no value. And when a fingerprint does not have any value, you can't say, well, it has no value, but it belongs to Lee Harvey Oswald because I say so. It don't work that way in a court of law. You have to prove that it is Lee Harvey Oswald's. And you have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. And trust me, there's a lot of doubt. Okay, here's the other thing that the FBI threw in here to show where the lift came from. The five-point identification. And this, the, I have to tell you, these are my dots over the dots of, uh, on the, uh, the barrel. These were little marks that were indentations. In order to illustrate it a little bit better, I colored them in so that you see, saw the end of the line because it had to have something. But that's not the point. The dots are immaterial right now. What I want you to notice is the angles. One and two. Notice this angle. It's quite wide. Look at the angle, the corresponding. It is supposed to be a mirror image. It's not a mirror image. Okay, so it doesn't pertain. Uh, no prosecutor would throw that in because a defense attorney would say, hey, wait a minute, what about this line here and this? They don't match. And if you look here, this is way over here. It don't match. But we accepted it because we were told. Okay, that this confirms the palm print. Do you see any latent images in there? Do you see any ridge lines? No, there's no points of identification. Okay, this is the other point, and believe me, I'm just about done here, okay? John K. Hill of Virginia, a guy I argue with over the internet a lot on various uh, issues. There's quite a few out, out here that uh, know me from the internet. Lieutenant Day said that uh, he noticed a palm print under the barrel, under the foregrip. It is impossible to look under the wooden foregrip from the muzzle end because of the bayonet mount, okay, and the uh, bear, I mean the foregrip retaining ring, which is right here. It's impossible to see the barrel. It's impossible to see anything under the barrel. And there is a small section from this point here. John didn't uh, give me enough of the picture, but there is a small, this area right here is metal surface. This is just a ring right here. And then there is a section of wood that covers over the top of the barrel. So if Lieutenant Day said he saw a latent image under the muzzle of the, uh, near the muzzle end of the barrel, he's lying because this is the only, he could only see it on the top, okay? And if it was there, he had to protect it, okay? Because it, he says it was protected by the wood, which meant that he thought it was under here, but it's because that would be protected, but this area is unprotected, so he should have had to be protected. And it wasn't, because there was no print there. Okay, here you can see the actual CE-139 and its dissembled parts, and you can see in this area right here, this would prevent seeing under this area of the wooden stock, and you can see this area right here, which is the wooden area that is over the barrel, and that prevents anybody from seeing a, uh, a latent image under here. The only, on the other side of the telescopic site, right in here, is the only barrel surface that Day could notice without removing the stock to see any latent image. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.